Welcome to module 10 of the EHAD eLearning Academy modules. During the course of this module, we're going to look at the basic science of haemophilia gene therapy. I'm Dr. Paul Batty, and I'm an associate professor at University College London and a haematologist at the Robbery Hospital in England. Over the course of this module, we will look in three parts. In the first part, we'll look at an introduction to gene therapy. In the second part, we'll look at the basic science of different AAV vectors that are used in the treatment of haemophilia. And in the third part, we'll look at efficacy and safety of AAV vectors from a basic science point of view. At the end of each of these different parts, we'll have a short quiz question. In the first part of this module, we'll have a look at an introduction to what gene therapy is. Over the course of this first part, We'll start off by having a look at an introduction to gene therapy. We'll look at the different ways which gene therapy can be applied and the different modalities. We'll then go on to look at adeno-associated virus, which is the natural virus from which AAV vectors are based. And in the final part, we'll then look at a little more detail at AAV vectors that are used for the treatment of haemophilia. Haemophilia A and Haemophilia B represent two severe inherited bleeding disorders. Both of these disorders are inherited as a result in a variance in the factor VIII or factor IX gene. And both disorders are monogenic. And by that, I mean that a variant in a single gene results in the bleeding that patients experience. Haemophilia A, the variants in factor VIII result in a reduction in factor VIII. And in haemophilia B, variants in factor IX result in a reduction in the factor IX protein. Both factor VIII and factor IX are produced in the liver. Factor VIII is produced in sinusoidal endothelial cells, and factor IX is produced in hepatocytes. And this site of production is relevant when we consider gene therapies that are used. We have good understanding of the genetics of both disorders, with both genes being sequenced in the early 1980s. These advances in genetics have then resulted in direct translational relevance with the ability to produce recombinant factor VIII and factor IX concentrates, which are used for the purpose of prophylaxis. This therapy has transformed care for individuals with haemophilia. However, these infusions require regular replacement by intravenous usage and do not provide a long-term solution for individuals and um, have a significant burden of care. Since the discovery of the factor VIII and factor IX genes, it's long been hoped that a gene therapy or usage of a genetic treatment could provide long-term benefits. So then when we think about gene therapy, there are a number of key components that are required to allow this to be successful. And this is highlighted in the cartoon towards the left of this slide. The first element is the genetic material that needs to be delivered to the cell. In our case, this is either the factor VIII or factor IX gene. As genetic material is fragile, this requires a vehicle or vector to allow this to traverse the circulation into the cell or organ of interest. These different forms can be present either viral or non-viral, and these are some examples of some of the forms that are in utilization at present. We need this genetic material then to be delivered to our cell to allow production of a protein. And in this case, we we're talking about factor VIII or factor IX. From a global perspective, when we think about any new therapy, however, there are a number of key requirements. The key requirement for any new therapy is safety. We also would like this to be efficacious and to provide a predictable response in different individuals. And ideally, from a global perspective, this should be affordable and available to all people who may want this new therapy. There are different ways which gene therapy can be attained. And on this next few slides, we'll look at some of the approaches that have been used at present. So when we think of a condition where you have a variant within a gene that results in an absent protein, there are two ways that this can be tackled from the point of view of genetic therapies. The first of these is by delivery of materials that can allow targeted repair of the variant within the gene. And in, in this situation, which we call gene editing, this allows a repair at the site within the person's genome, which can then allow functional protein production. 
The second approach, which is the predominant form which is in development and currently utilized, is by gene replacement therapy. In this circumstance, we have delivery of a functional copy of the gene, which is delivered to a person's cell. And in this situation, this allows normal production of a functional protein. But in this setting, the variant is still in situ, in place within, within a person's cell. So it doesn't allow correction, but allows normal production with this in the background. There are two ways which we can deliver gene therapy vectors using gene replacement therapy also. The first of these is by direct delivery into a person's body, which we call in vivo gene therapy. In this example, gene therapy is administered directly via an infusion, and this then allows the vehicle or vector to go to the organ where the protein production will be produced. The second form is ex vivo gene therapy. In this situation, all of the gene delivery occurs outside of the body. In this situation, stem cells are collected from a person within a clinic. And from these purified stem cells, the genetic material is then introduced directly into the cells outside of the body before being reinfused with a conditioning media. This has predominantly been used for approaches using lentivirus. The main form that is in development and in use at, moment, at the moment for haemophilia is using in vivo gene therapy, and the predominant vector which has been used is adeno-associated virus, which we'll look at over the course of the next few slides. So the naturally occurring virus on which these vectors are based is called adeno-associated virus. This virus was originally found as a contaminant in the laboratory in adenovirus preparations. It is a small virus, which you can see from the electron microscopy images on the left-hand slide. It is single-stranded and of the family-dependent parvovirus. And many people watching this webinar will have had an infection with this virus over the course of early childhood or um, early adolescence. When people have an, an infection with this virus, it's generally asymptomatic and is thought to be transmitted by the respiratory and gastrointestinal routes. And looking at the percentages of infection within population studies, this ranges between 30 to 80% and is not associated with any long-term significant illnesses. As a result, this is an attractive vehicle for delivery of genetic material as it's known to not have any significant long-term consequences. On the next slide, we'll look at a little bit more detail about how these natural viruses um, comprised. On the cartoon towards the top of this slide, you can see an overview of the contents of this virus. When we break this down more simply, you have the viral DNA, which is it within the center of this, and also the capsid, which acts as a way of delivery of this virus through the circulation and to protect the contents inside. Within the genetic contents, you have two main regions. The first of these is the replication region, which allow the virus to produce all the proteins that are required for its replication and persistence. Although this virus on its own is replication deficient, so even in the presence of these proteins, it is not able to cause active infection and requires the presence of other viruses. The second genetic region contained within the AAV is the CAP region, which is responsible for encoding the capsid structural proteins. And we'll look at these in a little bit more detail in the second part of this module. All of this genetic material is then sandwiched between these two inverted terminal repeat regions, which provide stability and also are involved in the long-term persistence of the um, virus. When we modify this in the laboratory for the purpose of delivery of gene therapy, all of the, the major viral elements are removed. So within this, we have removal of both the rep and cap regions. In the place of both of these regions, we insert a gene which we would like to deliver into this vector under the control of a promoter region, which can then allow more targeted expression of the gene within a cell of interest. The areas that are maintained from the original virus are these inverted terminal repeats, which you can still see towards the end of the vector construct. So in summary, this has no significant viral sequences contained within vectors. It contains a gene of interest. 
And within this, we can already see that there are specific mechanisms in place to allow this to be targeted, both within the coating, but also within the promoter that is used. The infusion of AV vectors is given as a single infusion, which is done in a clinical space. This is given via a peripheral vein, and then this is delivered via the circulation to a target organ. AV itself um, only affects somatic cells, so these are cells that are not involved in reproduction. So the AV does not transduce um, the sperm cells or oocytes. So this is really a treatment that is within one generation. So then in summary for this first part, gene therapy is a promising approach for the treatment of haemophilia. We've had a look at the different mechanisms by which gene delivery can be attained, and these can occur be either in vivo, so within the body, or they can be done ex vivo outside of the body. AV vectors for gene replacement therapy are the most advanced forms currently in development and licensed in the clinic. This approach uses gene delivery of a, a gene of factor VIII or factor IX to the liver to allow stable production. And this treatment is administered as a single infusion. Thank you for joining for this first part. And let's look at a, the first e-quiz question. Question one. What is the main vector used for gene therapy for the treatment of haemophilia? Is this number one, lentivirus? Number two, adeno-associated virus? Number three, herpes simplex virus? Or is the current approach non-viral using lipid nanoparticles? The correct answer for this part is adeno-associated virus, 